Hello, Sylvester. Well, hello there, Dominic. Did I miss anything? Actually, you did. Two men were just looking for you. One of them was holding a camera. Oh? Yes. Apparently, after your comeback, a lot of real fans made the journey to see you. I guess they wanted some shots of me. Correct! Hello, Silverlink. My name is Christopher Lopo. I work for the BBC. Oh, ha ha ha. Pleasure. Well... Hello, my, my name is Matthew Jones, and this is the 5 o'clock news. It has been some 20 years since steam trains ran on Britain's railways, but thanks to volunteers around the country, many of them have been restored and run to this day, such as this one. That is a three-chime steam whistle, the trademark of the LNER's A4 Pacifics, which were built to run high-speed passenger trains on the East Coast Main Line in the 1930s. In the past week, a recently rebuilt member of this class has been running in on the newly reopened Woodhead Line. Today, we sent one of our reporters to Manchester London Road to you, Christopher. Thank you, Matthew. Now, behind me is the engine in question, Silver Link. After an interview with the manager of the Woodhead Line, Mr. Edwin Salmon, we found out this locomotive is actually the pioneer of what later became the fastest steam engines around. Some of you may remember the original Super Jubilee trial run, when this locomotive hit 112 miles per hour and the plane, with the camera crew, could barely keep up. So, Silverlink, your return to steam has caused a real sensation for the rail fan community. How do you come to be here? Well, it's, it's quite a story, really. Where does he get to be in TV? I've been here far longer than that, Silver Dorvage. Here we go again. Every day I pull the express and nobody even bothers to look at me. And then he comes in all silver and shiny and there is already a camera crew waiting for him. I'm telling you, it's not fair. Did you ever even consider that he was a celebrity back in the day? I know that, Richard. But it's not fair, you can. I work very hard and nobody even bothers to look at me, let alone bring a camera. But when a rail fan spots the door wedge, the next day he's already on TV? No, it just isn't fair, you can. I, uh, I mean, yes, I know and I understand what you're getting at, but that still doesn't mean he doesn't work hard. It's quite clear he doesn't. And with that, John stormed away. John was quite determined to prove Richard wrong, but he was even more determined to get on TV. One afternoon, he called all the engines into the sheds at Sheffield, where, all except Silver Link, he wanted to reveal to them his secret plan. This better be important. I was supposed to collect mail on my branch. Your attention, please. Now, you must be wondering why I've called you here. No, not really, John. We've got work to do. Can it be some other time, John? <sighs> Go on, then. The engines left John on his own, but he wasn't alone for long. Soon, he saw a green engine backing into the shed. Eden? No, John, it's me, Stephen. Stephen, you're supposed to be black. I was. I was repainted at York. Where you know? Yes. Well then, you already came what's going on, I assume. I. I mean, yes I do. Stephen then quickly changed the topic, and the two started chatting long into the night. The next morning, 
John was still seething with jealousy over Silverlink's celebrity. He went about doing his work, but whenever he saw another engine, he always announced that he would get on TV, somehow. But the others took little notice. A few days later, John was pulling the express as usual. Then suddenly, he could feel himself getting slower and slower. Driver, what's going on? Ah, oh, your pantographs have failed. Bollocks, not again. Uh, I think Silverlink will be due in a few minutes with the Silver Rose, so he can help us. Oh great, just has to be him, doesn't it? Silverlink soon arrived and stopped just behind John's train. Well, hello there, John. Well, what, what seems to be the matter? Could you push us till Manchester? Well, most certainly, I shall. Silverlink buffered up and started pushing. Soon they reached Manchester, where they were met by a group of rail fans, cameramen, and news reporters. What's this then? Everyone ran past John. They ran all the way to where Silverlink was standing quietly. Oh, come on! And just then, a boy ran up to John. Look, Daddy, this is John. He pointed at the sulking engine. John, you don't look well. What's the matter? Well, you see I broke down. Don't be sad. I don't think there isn't anything they couldn't fix. Yeah, but I'll still have to go all the way to Doncaster. Would you be 76024 by any chance? Aye, that was my number back in the day. John! Do you remember me? We were both at Worth in the early 50s. I'm Ian! Ian? Oh, that's right. I remember. Who are ya? Good, <laughs> thanks. So you do, still don't have any luck with your pantographs. <laughs> Aye. That evening, the engines were at the sheds. Well, John, you got onto TV after all. Look. John took a look at their TV. Yes, the Wooded Line engines have their own TV, and I don't. The world is not a fair place. Oi, shut up. Oh, sorry. The veteran steam engine, Silverlink, helped a struggling electric engine reach Manchester. Which begs the question, are steam trains really obsolete technology? Certainly not today. Son of a...